Well, good morning again, and we're back for a special Thursday edition, and we have none other than PBA CEO Coley Edison joining us here in a little while. Uh, she's wrapping up some uh, some other interviews as it's been a pretty busy week with everything else going on. And as always, I am joined by internet, PBA, and world personality, along with PBA and Weber Cup titleist, Beef Stew. How are you this morning? Uh, doing pretty good. Yeah, I, um, I'm i excited by this. Um, Coley is always energizing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be good. Um, like I say, the, the, the last time we had her on, um, I think she had us ready to run through brick walls and get started bowling again. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully she brings some more of that uh, positivity. Um, it's good to hear. Um, Bolin's been, uh, back on, um, you know, in the mainstream, um, it's been, uh, starting to get back a little bit business as usual. Um, one thing I will say that I do think has been a little bit unfair is I've seen a lot of criticism of the PBA over the scheduling on Sunday. Yeah. What, what, what do people expect the PBA to do? Call Fox and complain about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean. At the same time, I'm sure other sports complain when we go over on the bowling when we're live. Right. You know, I think I think they more than make up for it by the fact that you can recatch that show six or seven times during the week. Um, you could never do that when it was on ESPN. So. Um, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. So uh, they work with us. We get a ton of replays. But yeah, there's nothing. What are you going to do? It's. Uh... <laughs> Poor Woodgets, Mr. Webercoff himself says, Good afternoon, guys, and the board from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, things I've noticed on the internet uh, the, last, uh, the last couple of days. Um, the house has now got the, a new uh, merch site up. So um, I thought I'd give them a plug. Um, so if you check out Brad Miller's Twitter, um, it has a link to their new merchandise site. Uh, they've, uh, they've broken away from uh, their previous supplier and now they've got all their good stuff up on their own site. So no doubt they're making more money as well. So <laughs> trying to get a little bit of support um yeah i uh you can always uh go on beef and and uh buy a t-shirt from us um if you have any ideas of uh new designs that you would like to see uh shoot us a uh, shoot us a message on uh on any of our uh social media um accounts and uh yeah we'll try and uh we're thinking about expanding the line and having some different ideas so uh if there's anything that you'd like to see beef and Barnsley uh, related, um, let us know. Uh, we will uh, we will get with the brains of the operation down at uh, Coolwick and see what they can uh, put together for us. Sounds good. This Sue, we have a couple comments in here. Uh, Stanley, appreciate it. Um, he liked to recap the other day. Uh, what do we got? World Championship. Oh, that was when we were uh, we were up in the booth. And we spent we spent a few hours together. Yes, we yeah, did yeah. have a good time up there. That, uh, that yeah, I, uh, I I had uh, I had the one block where I uh, I was cheering on everybody shooting three hundred. Just a fan of the game. Love it. When I'm in the booth, I just want everybody to strike. I'm not interested in the grind out. I think the board needs a t-shirt. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we can start doing uh, limited edition shirts with the boards. <laughs> Might be the way to go. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so so that so that was good. Um, we've got some fun uh, Weber Cup content um, hitting uh, hitting our YouTube page um, over the weekend. Um, we did some uh, interviews of the players um down in uh, down at the pba league um i had a bit of a technical snafu so we've got to re-record one of the interviews because if i put it up it'd be a little disappointing um 
because neither Barnes or uh, whoever it was were looking at the camera and they were talking and there was no audio. So even even the people who are talented enough to read lips wouldn't know what was going on. And now it's dumb, I think. So, I, I but, believe, um, but yeah, it's a fun segment. I don't know if we'll re- quite, quite recreate it. It was, it would have been fairly good, but uh, yeah, but uh, I'm sure you can. You, you guys can are definitely talk. going to enjoy Stu's interviews of the USA players, where he he gives a few of them the full business, and uh, it, and it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, we uh, we we had a good time. We decided that we were going to do it a little differently. So Chris got to uh, interview the. Uh, the European team and I and I took the US team. So uh so yeah, I've I've got the US one ready. It's gonna hit I think I'm gonna put it up on Friday afternoon and then hopefully we can get the interview added to the European one and we'll get that up over the weekend. So yeah. We'll take a few bowling questions here before we get going. But uh, how do you feel about how much Eurothane was used in this year's World Series of bowling? Uh, not surprised at all. It was used a lot at South Point and then the lanes got hard on those shows. And so for the guys that are any good at it, you know, your thing blends out the uh, the good and the bad and makes it a little bit easier to hit the pocket. It's harder to carry, but the scoring pace dictated that hitting the pocket was much more important. Uh, not surprised at all. And I think it was turned out pretty good for most of the guys that did it. It's the new world order. I mean, with the way the patterns are designed and the way the lane surfaces have gone, your thing looks good on almost every pattern we bowl on. Um, it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, you know, get on the train or get run over by it. $5 Phil. He's an upgrade. Uh, um, that's on the playoffs being all sing- single game matches. Uh, I think I'm pretty con- fairly consistent myself on thinking more games is always better, but, uh, it is one of the questions that we will ask Coley shortly. And, uh, but I, I believe the answer, uh, is going to be that we have a, less shows than we had in previous years. So you either have to cut games or you cut players. And since it was set up as it was all year long, uh, probably beneficial for the players that they kept the players in, but. I'm actually, I, I'm actually for it in the way the format is. Um, really? I, 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 well, I think if you're going to do two game total, it's one thing, but mm-hmm. when they did, one game, one game, roll off. I I just thought we would, we we would just add in stuff for for no real reason. I I like it. Like I think it adds urgency. I don't. I think that I think that both people are trying to win the first game. Well, both people are trying to win both games, obviously. But I don't see that there's like there was obviously a a, a usual advantage by winning the second game because you were obviously more lined up than the other guy for the roll off. So mm-hmm. it was still only a one game match. You were just, you effectively made the first game pointless. So now it's like, let's go. Uh, yeah, I do, I do agree. It's a little, I, I, since uh, it got brought up several years back, and it, you have to incorporate the world bowling format a little bit to do it, but those little shortened matches, I always thought that would be actually a pretty clever way of basically three, four game matches and just have several of them. You could run, you know, a, a best of two, best of three, best of five, pretty quickly in that format, and uh, and have a lot of important shots in a really short amount of time. Almost make it a little bit like darts, where you have legs and sets. Yeah, darts and, and tennis, those kind of things. Where yeah, I don't think as many people are familiar with the dart setup, but yeah, I agree um, that that uh, that might be a good way to go. Hey, hey, Bo, Bo you and former tour rep star Rick Benoit. I don't know. Kyle Sherman's blue hammer doesn't look much different to any of the other balls being thrown. Tell you what, him and Chuga, they both make those the the blue hammer hook a bunch. Uh, I just think these guys just are able to make those balls hook way more than the other guys used to. And because there's and because there's more oil on the lane, the ball doesn't burn up as much. Yeah, they well, they hit up on it more like guys in that era did. They get it in the floor and they're able to throw it a little slower. And Speaking of the star of the hour, she has freed up her busy schedule and is time to join us. So with no, <clears throat> excuse me, all choked up, no further ado, we're going to bring in the PBA CEO and now of undercover boss fame, <laughs> Nicole Edison. How are you this morning? 
Hi guys, good morning. How are you? Very good. Very good. Really good. We're uh, we were just talking about the energy that you bring to these things, and we're uh, we're all ready to go uh, to hear to hear what you've got to say. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you, because we have quite a few um, international uh, people watching the show, um, maybe you could just give a, a brief, I don't know, synopsis maybe of what Undercover Boss actually is. Not necessarily your episode, but what the premise of the show is. Um, so they don't they don't have Undercover Boss internationally? Not, not that I've seen. Okay. Yeah, may, maybe they do now, but just, I, I guess, just let people know. <laughs> So Undercover Boss is when executives from um, different companies, all different kinds of companies, um, go in disguise so that they can work uh, next to and work with the uh, employees at the field level so that they can learn something about their company, whether it's how they operate or what their practices and procedures are, um, and then possibly implement change. So that's the, that's the core, how I would describe it. There you go. You got a fan already. Love Jones. Um, I love Jones. I love that name. <laughs> um, so, uh, what's the length of the episode that you're on? It's an hour. It's an hour of. So I can just say this weekend is going to be so huge for the PBA and Bolero and bowling. Um, I talked a little bit yesterday to John Mark. I don't know if you guys got to hear the podcast. Yeah, I did, and that's what that's why we're gonna. Uh, this segment, I was kind of doing something a little different. I wasn't going to ask you questions really about what you did because yeah. I think you covered a lot of what you were able to in that podcast. And I'll set, I'll put a link in the description and the comments for the people um, for that podcast. Cool. Because what I'm, what I really look at it as it's exposure, everything that we can do to expose bowling to a wide audience. You know, you guys know this as, as the bowlers, like that's my whole goal. Every day I'm out there hustling to get more people interested in bowling so that, they're playing, they're watching, um, and they're really just experiencing our sport because it's time to get it back to the mainstream. Definitely. Um, how long did it take to film? Uh, like, how long were you Ooh. in disguise, so to speak? So it's a two-week process. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And it was up until these this past time in Virginia, that was the longest I had ever been away from my daughter. So, um, yeah, I did it. I filmed in Connecticut. New Jersey and Atlanta. Okay, and I heard that it was right around the same time that you were doing the negotiations with the PBA. Oh, it was, I think we started, I think we closed the deal on the PBA September 10th and I started filming October 1st. Um, so it was just like, so much was going on. I had to pretend, I told my team that I was going to do a press tour about the PBA. Um, they never really caught on because I never did that actual press tour. I was <laughs> doing undercover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of uh, the biggest fans of bowling here, Kristen, says bowling is the best sport on TV. She doesn't want to miss any of it. Yay! Well, we're trying now, to bring more and more to you every single day. Now, when you got done, did you did you have to fire anyone? You're going to have to tune in, Chris. I cannot <laughs> give it away. Fair enough. PBS would kill me. <laughs> so uh, the fun question that we that we were we were uh, throwing around was. How do you think that an undercover boss on the PBA tour would go? That is a great question. Um, you guys are so, you guys are onto everything. It would not work. You would call me out immediately. You would say, who is this person here? And you would go to like five different people to try to get the answer. So I don't think it would work to be undercover on the tour. You would just call me out no matter what. Well, just to be fair, there's about, there's about three people that would do that and then be tireless and then yeah. Yes, and then those three people would tell three people who would Everybody. tell three people. <laughs> the next thing you know, be hey, Coley's undercover over there. Go say hi to her. <laughs> <laughs> you you do have a pretty distinctive voice, though. So I oh. had to, I faked my voice on the show. So okay. I, I they were like, pick a voice. So I like talked softly, which is you guys know, not me. Um, <laughs> anything softly is very not me. Um, so I had to just like try to talk more softly because yeah, my voice is distinctively Coley. <laughs> Verity. So the student may also kick you out of the PPA. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, for those who haven't seen it, we found, we, uh, we did some digging on the internet and we've, uh, we found one of your disguises. Mm, what'd you find? So there we go. There, there was you. Is that come up? Yeah, there you go. So that was, that was sorry Coley. about that. Oh no problem. So okay. that was Coley ready to go. 
Um, I wouldn't have recognized you. No, I mean, so let's talk about this disguise. So that wig, um, totally natural, right? Like so many people have that just natural hair. Um, what you don't know is every day they painted freckles on my face. So like you can kind of see it here, but they would flick makeup to make freckles on my face, which is the worst experience to sit there and have makeup like <laughs> tossed on your face like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine that you have a, a professional makeup artist and you're like, this isn't how I imagined this going. Yeah, I mean, I knew, I, you know, you you know you're going to be looking different, so it wasn't. Well, I, I meant just like when, when you were a little girl and you thought, oh, I'm going to get access to a professional makeup artist. You didn't think that they were going to try and make right, you Right, no, worse. make me uglier and no, no. <laughs> there you go. I need the wig. Huh? Yeah. Well, uh, so that's on tomorrow, right? Tomorrow night. I can't believe it. After a year, it's finally on. So PBA we're and Bolero, um, we're going to be on broadcast TV two times this weekend. It's a huge, huge weekend for us, you guys. So we have Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time on CBS broadcast, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Um, on Fox broadcast. So it's, it's huge. Yeah, I actually, um, I can share my uh, homemade link here. We've got the... Uh, Stu, we have a lot of professional links that the, oh God. Well, <laughs> well, please use the stuff that we make for the PBA. I have a full marketing team. I get it, Coley, but I couldn't find one that had all of the dates on it. Okay, <laughs> I, I will have it sent to you. Right there you after go. But we're on a Saturday, tenth on Fox, eight p.m., and then the following weekend, six p.m. on Fox. This is a, this is an insult. I can't look at this. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just trying to we're, we're trying to keep it authentic. I like it. I like it. No, I saw the graphic. The graphic was cool, but it didn't have like um, all of the We have time. the schedule. I'll give you the schedule. Graphic. I wanted people to kind of get a uh, an understanding of quite Check how- Check your email work. today. You get PBA emails. It'll, it has an email in there with the full schedule. Perfect. Yeah. And then we'll uh, attempt to uh, share that around. And I will have Natalie, my creative director, not murder you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> Stu is yeah, part, Stu of the part of the marketing dream team at the PBA. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll see. I, I, we, we were, uh, we were trying to uh, put out fires, though. Oh, here we go. Del Ballard, thanks. The great and the good. Stu insulting someone. No, he is so British. Ah, I love it. Um, yeah, people have been, uh, people have been. Uh, kind of been a little negative about the uh, scheduling on Sunday. And we were trying to say, like, this isn't a PBA thing. Like, you know, it, right. it, it, you know this, this is the thing. We, we, this is a crazy, crazy year. You know, the, the normal schedule, this wasn't our normal schedule. So we have to look at the opportunities and take them when we can get them. So our normal schedule, the PBA playoffs were going to be on Monday nights. Um, and they were going to be on for, I guess, 10 Monday nights in a row. But none of those shows were going to be on FS uh, on Big Fox. So the plan was when Big Ten, the football, um, was canceled, we were actually going to be able to move all the shows to Big Fox. And then through, um, I don't know, I guess a president took credit for it, Big, Fo uh, Big Ten is back. And so we are not going to be able to do all of our shows on Fox, but we will get two of those shows on Big Fox. So think about it. We, you know, it's, it's, it's not a... Not ideal that we're going to be up against football on those Sunday shows, but we will get the big numbers, the big exposures for the first two shows that will be on Big Fox, those two Saturday nights. Right. So everybody tune in. Uh, we need to show Fox that we we can hold a number. and uh, Dude, that's the whole thing, time. right? Like everyone always asks, and I'm the, the, the hate that I always get is like, get more sponsors, get more money for the players. <laughs> watch the shows, people. You yeah. know, you guys, the diehard fans, don't watch. Who's watching? How can I help grow this thing? That That's what I need to do. So if I can deliver the numbers every single weekend, then that's going to make Fox give me better windows. And that's going to make sponsors spend more money. You know, you guys saw we got Light Life on. We got Guaranteed Rate on. Those, those types right. of numbers, the, like that helped the story that we've been able to tell and have them come on as sponsors. So, you know, my message is always just tune in, tune in, tune in, set the DVRs. Yeah. yeah. So we have to have viewers. We have to push that number. You have to push it past hockey and approach some of those, you know, the baseball and, and the basketball numbers. 
to bring in. You have to sell the whole package and we have to do our part all the way across. And we have to be entertaining on our side and, and we need we need our-, our It's people. a tough sports climate though. I'll tell you, we are in a sports surplus right now. If you think about it, when our uh, league sure. shows, which are amazing and our World Series of bowling shows were on, we were not only up against the NFL, we were up against NFL, MLB playoffs, NBA finals. Um, one night it was against the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, it was just at WNBA. So it's just everything shifted, right, with the with the COVID calendar. So it's just a really hard climate. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of viewership numbers are down. The NBA uh, finals, their game one was the lowest viewed game one ever. It was down 63 percent. So, right. you know, we're, it's a tough battle. And the battle is always going to be to gain eyeballs and viewership. I felt like the um, I was actually talking to Carissa about this um, because of the way the schedule was with the league. We were actually able to watch quite a few of the league shows on TV after we'd bowled because, of course, we go back to the hotel and they were on in the bar. Now, of course, in the bar, they didn't have the sound on. But like from a visual point of view, I was saying to her that I, I didn't really notice that there wasn't a crowd on the TV shows because they, they did a really good job with the editing, but also with the pace of play it kind of went to the players going back to their teams and the interaction with their teams. And then the next guy was on the approach. I mean, a couple of times, Simonelli was actually so fast. We did, he was, they almost needed to show a shot on replay, but. Yes. Unlike Brad Miller, who was taking every single second of his shot. Exactly. Well, Brad, Brad hasn't been on TV too much, so he's trying to maximize his exposure. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, he did a great job going up against Belmo. That was super impressive. Um, no, but you're right, Stu. What we tried to do is create the set. And I think you're going to even see, uh, you know, Chris will see it when he's there uh, tomorrow. But the, the set is amazing what we're doing for playoffs. We doubled the LEDs down the lane. So those are even more. But like that behind yeah. the lane LED, <clears throat> when you're watching that on TV, it feels upgraded. It feels yeah. like it's on par with these other sports and you don't miss the fans of course we want our audiences back and we'll look to that in 21 until we can do it safely we're not doing it but thank you i appreciate that feedback because that's what we're really trying hard to do is, is create a dynamic environment you know in the absence of the fans yeah i mean like, like i say, i just felt like specifically with the team situation with you having like the five other guys there and the interactions i thought it was cool like with the players being mic'd up and you being able to like kind of like the bowling, uh, I guess the avid bowling fan was kind of, it was kind of fun for them listening to, you know, Chris talk to his team. Like, this is, you know, this is what I thought. Like, it was kind of like when you were bowling in college or you're bowling, you know, just regularly with your league teammates, you know, when the guy's struggling, like the other four guys on Chris's team, it was like a regular league night. Why right. did you get this guy to bowl with? That's why I personally <laughs> love team bowling so much because yes, our, our pros you know, at the elite level, you're bowling individually, but we're really the only ones doing that. You know, recreationally, you're bowling as a team. You bowl team through high school. You bowl team through college. And then as adults, you bowl team when you're on your league. So I think it's a really cool offering that we're able to show the fans. And I got a lot of really positive feedback about league. Um, so I think I'm going to be making a few announcements in the upcoming months about what we'll be doing for league in 2021. Okay, cool. That kind of that that kind of kills the two questions I had because I was talking. We were going to quickly ask about whether there was any thoughts of expansion in any direction, like whether there was more venues or whatever. And then um, the other question was uh, that we'd been asked a few times was whether uh, you felt like the ladies' teams were here to stay. So I think I could say that women. I want women on the PBA league. I'm not sure that there'll be individual women's teams going forward. Um, I think that was just a you know we did that draft after we had done you know the main draft because of the mm -hmm. way that the PWBA tour netted out. So I can tell you women will be on the PBA league teams. Um, probably not exactly the same way that it was in 2020. Hopefully okay. nothing's the same exact way as it was in 2020. <laughs> the first two months would have been okay. Yeah, we were doing really well. The first two months were awesome. Uh, up until Vegas, it was pretty good. Yeah, and then and most of Vegas was okay too. And then and then it was a ghost town. Yeah. Was, I'll never forget that moment. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if you guys were still there at the time where we actually – um, took a vote from the players of who wanted to keep going and who wanted to stop because at that time that was when we didn't know enough right like 
uh, basketball had just stopped and I got on the last flight out to Vegas to be at that world championship match. And then the world shut down. And during that time, if you remember, we thought it was everywhere. We thought we could get it by just, you know, you had mm-hmm. to disinfect everything and your grocery. So, you know, everything has changed. We learn more and more and more. And, and, you know, I'm done with 2020. I'm ready for 21 after the playoffs, after the playoffs. <laughs> so uh, for the people at home, just, I, I, quickly brought on my makeshift graphic that you screamed at me about and whatever. But um, is how has the format changed for this year with the playoffs? Um, what, well, I think what- Chris knows because um, he's he's in it. So the, the biggest change is that everything is a one game match. So what we've done is taken the excitement that you've seen in the PBA tour in every single stepladder final, which is one game. And we've taken that format and put it in the beginning. So every single match is a one game match. Um, if it's a tie, we're going to that one ball roll off. Uh, and I think it just really helps build the excitement and like the idea that this is do or die, all the money's on the line. Um, I can make a really exciting announcement on this show if you guys want me to. Go ahead. Well, of course. We're more than what we're All right, so news. let's ask your audience. Let's see what they say. Do we have any WWE fans out there? I think we do. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see it in the comments. Guys, let us know if we have any WWE fans. Okay. Well, we'll uh we'll, we'll wait. We've got some uh we we've uh we've I know that there are some. Here we go. Yeah. All right, cuz I'm going to share my screen in a second. Hold on. So How do I minimize this thing? Okay. Uh Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <There we go>. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> You're good. We talked to our agenda. You, we both. Oh, am <laughs> I sorry? Am I ruining the whole show? No, 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 no. Somebody's giving me a hard time for not letting Chris ask questions. Oh. Okay. Tell me when you're ready for me to share my screen. We're ready. Okay. I don't think this. I'm gonna. Are you ready? This I'm is ready. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. Can you see it? <laughs> there we go. For the first time ever, the winner of the PBA playoffs will be receiving an official WWE Championship title belt. <laughs> That's awesome. I, the, the biggest WWE fan I, I could remember was Devaney, and I don't. I think he'd be very jealous that he's not involved now. Well, All right, he, so that's just a sneak peek. He had his whole thing there. I will for actually a while. be sharing yeah. that with everybody on Saturday. But we are so excited to be partnering with the WWE, and one of our PBA players will be an official WWE title holder. Hey, if I win, can I can I challenge Stone? Yes, that's the whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> Taking that. So guy we know Rob Stone is a big WWE, loves to flaunt his title, and now one of our 24 top players will have their own title belt to uh, <laughs> display. So um, does this mean that, like, you know, uh, we could just be walking down the street and a random wrestler just come and start pinning them? So that's the 24-7 title? No, you're not going to have to worry about that. This is a custom title just for the NBA <laughs> players. Um, so I think that's a really good prize, but I also think the $100,000 check uh, for the first place prize might be a little uh, a little more exciting, too. Greg doesn't believe you. <laughs> that's He's worth dead. more than the check. <laughs> my, uh, my mortgage company wouldn't agree. Right. <laughs> yeah. Send that in. <laughs> Well, there you go. Breaking news. We have a WWE title on the on the line. Um, now Pete Weber is probably going to turn up and uh, he, he might come in undercover boss style and steal it. Well, I think we got to be careful as there, there could be WWE players that show up. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And anything's, anything's up and out there right now. Um, <laughs> Phil Brylo says, does this make EJ a heavyweight? He's barely a flyweight. <laughs> Oh, Phil. Oh, Phil. <laughs> okay, Coley. Well, um, do you have any other um, exciting things to share? Or No, you guys got to let me go back to work. I got a lot to do. We have a, a big, big set of shows coming up. And um, 
Got to I got to go down to Virginia. I got to go. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you tomorrow. All right. See you tomorrow, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks right. everybody. Take care. All right. So there you go. I told you she'd bring energy. Never um, a lack of it. Allison says, <laughs> if you bowling ages, that would be awesome. This is not as awesome. He's, yeah, probably you not. Know, um, <laughs> well, Oscar's excited. He's always into contact bowling. Yeah, I don't think any of us want that match now. That match with Smallwood just got a lot worse for me. I could get rolled up in a hurry in that one. So... <laughs> <laughs> The back, the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Better get your ninja gear, Stu. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, any of these tie-ins with other sports, I think is going to, you know, expose us to a different audience. Um, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely exciting. That's for sure. Um, you know, but a finishing maneuver now after a strike. <laughs> Pete, Pete, Pete Weber has the one. Yeah, yeah, he always he had that one a long time ago. Ten years ago, he was doing the, you know, and he does the fist yeah. down. Um, sorry. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Kong Wendy. Wendy. Um, we've got some uh, on the <laughs> Undertaker. I had another good one. Uh, here we go. Tom Harris. Sorry, Tom Harris. Said, Can we start spiking bowling balls like the NFL? Maybe you can, Tom. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've got the physical attributes for that. <laughs> um, Dell says the crotch chop. I, I almost think Pete Weber's more famous for the crotch chop than Shawn Michaels. Yeah. DDP, <laughs> oh, that's right. Dallas Town Page. There you go. You have to be a little old to remember him. So there you go. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, Biscuit has the hip thrust. <laughs> Talking about uh, Richie T. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> there, 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 there we go. So I, I honestly, I, I don't really know where to go with the rest of the show now. Um, Coley, Coley spoke about expanding the PBA league. Um, sounds like we might be having uh, ladies on each team. Um, from what she was talking about. Um, a WWE title belt. Um, I got shouted at for producing a graphic. Um, what else happened in that 20 minutes, Chris? It was, it was uh, I keep waiting for Big Mike. Uh, I, I got some Twitter feeds and I, he didn't actually have the, have the stones to comment during the show. So now that Coley's gone, maybe he'll, he'll uh, pipe in now. Um, um well, they, I mean, they asked a couple of questions, but, they almost asked questions uh, under their um, uh, sweep the rack, and uh, Coley was actually answering them while they were asking them. So I didn't highlight them. Um, she covered the um, yeah. She she covered uh, ratings. Um, she covered the difficulties with trying to. Here, here he is. This that's his wife's account. Um, oh okay. Um, he covered. Uh, uh, there you go. Sweep the Rack, and I'm loving the announcement. Uh, I feel like Sweep the Rack, it almost needs to have a um, a Friday night edition now. I, I feel like uh, that they've, they've got a lot to get off their chest listening to this. Uh. Oh, there you go. She forgot to tell us. Uh, PBA.com is all new. So uh, let's try it. There you go. Yeah, there's been updates. It's uh, It's been a work in progress. It had a mess to fix when they came in as well. It was not uh, always the most efficient site before that. So uh, I like it. Uh, I've got it. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, the bracket. We did go over some of these matchups Tuesday. Uh, Stu and I may pick a bracket. Uh, we probably won't pick the bracket today. But There you go, Coley. That was the graphic I should have added. Um, if you'd have given me a heads up and I'd have known it was there, I'd check social media. Um, so you can even add it to your, uh, calendar on your computers or phones. So there, you know, Saturday, 8 PM Eastern first round of playoffs, round of 24. 
do you know your schedule yet, Chris? Do you know when the second matches? So, so you will be on this show. I am on that show right there, full of Mr. Smallwood, along with a few others. Okay, so um, so we will be in England when that airs. Yes. So we can, uh, yeah, we can let you know. Um, no problem. More player pages coming soon. Okay. There you go. Saturday, Saturday. Then you go Sunday, Sunday. And, and then, uh, um, this is the big deal. Uh, we're going to have um, what I would guess to be four hours on Fox Sports 1 on November the 8th, looking at the way the schedule's set up. Uh, 1.30 to 3.30, and I imagine it's going to be 3.30 to 5.30. Um, yeah, that'll be, a, that'll be a big day there. Uh, we'll be up against NFL, of course, but uh, nonetheless, DVR it. If you say our- that now. Yeah, well, we might, not be, right now. We might be the only thing on TV. So, <laughs> um, Charlie Tapp has a pretty good one. Uh, can't <laughs> wait for the PBA fix the oxygen tank battle royal. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling pretty fit for that one. I got a chance in that one. Um, until I meet Tom Hess. Th- this was a question that I actually wish I'd have thought about asking because I know that there's a lot of interest in the betting on it, and I love it. I love the fact that we could that people are able to bet on bowl, and I think that's that's one of the biggest areas of growth um, in all of sports. And um, yeah, I uh, I'll uh, let me uh, let me just have a quick little look around for some of the other things. We just got uh, yeah the news section. Looks like it's much easier to navigate knowing where stuff is. Um, yeah, I like it. Good job. So we'll assume you'll be on flow at the same times. I don't know that for sure, but I think that's how it's been done here in the past. And so I would assume that would continue forward. Uh, there you go. Direct link into the PBA's YouTube page. Who will be the PBA king of the lanes? So there we go. And I like it. Nice job. And Fox Bet is terrible, he says. They need to align with the new app, perhaps, but the fact that it's on and available right now is a good start. And yeah. With many I, things, I think things will improve on both sides. I imagine that they have to know what they don't know. You know, they have to figure out what they don't know first so they can improve on a lot of things. And so, uh, uh, you know, bowling is, as we know, uh, those of us on the inside, how tricky it can be game to game and those kind of things. So getting the odds right, getting that stuff. So... It needs to get on DraftKings to really go mainstream. I don't know. Sports betting was quite mainstream uh, before DraftKings came along. Um, yeah, I think we take what, what we can get. But, yeah, obviously the bigger the platform, the better the, op- the opportunity. And as we know, several people in our uh, in our collective circles will bet on just about anything. So... <laughs> Um. Oh, oh, Stu is not on the player profiles as well. Well, it takes a long time to get down to thirty-first in the rankings. You can hardly blame them. Um. I don't really want to look at my stats, so I don't want you guys to look at my stats either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it hasn't. It hasn't been a point of emphasis for me, other than. Uh... <laughs> for a sobering view as, as to what needs to be improved again, moving forward. So, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got a tour who does that for me. (laughs) WWE stars do PBA player introductions. That'd be good. There you go. Um, I don't know where you're coming at from here on acting classes. You're talking about from the WWE side. Yeah, I guess. Um, have you guys talked about Storm acquiring 900 Global? There isn't really much to talk about. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's an official acquisition under the same umbrella. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think moved to, moved to Utah, everything's being manufactured there. Uh, still separate brands and separate brand managers, and so. 
There's some balls out. Uh, Craig saying that the archive results don't seem to be there. Um, um, I'm sure that they will be. I'm sure that it's a case of they've got to go through because it looks like they've updated every section of the site. So you update the main sections and then archive stuff like that is going to be updated at a slower pace. What you don't want, from my understanding of building this stuff, is you don't want to update a bunch of it and then have you click on it and it goes to the other style. Then that just looks kind of shitty. So you've got to go through and update all of the pages. So it's going to take it, it's it's going to take a minute. Yeah, there's there's a actually a, a huge amount of information on that site when you really dig in and uh between different sections, like some of the archive stuff was extra frame, some was flow bowling, some of there's there's ABC, ESPN, there's a lot of different things to sort through there. So Oh, sorry, we went for the same one. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Mashing yeah, up with the chairs, that's that's an acquired art. I feel like um, I feel like chair shots for the roll two would have been fine. Yeah, at least kneecap a guy for it. So, yeah. Um. Well, we needed to be there, so there's that. Uh, I was there, just not for long. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you were you were participating, and I was at home. So. Uh, yeah. The. Um... It, it, it was a weird scenario. The whole thing was a weird scenario. The PBA were trying to limit how many people were in the bowling yeah. center because of all of the COVID issues. And like I say, I, I, I think it was good that we were able to get footage up, but I'm not sure that that was... Let's just say it was just a weird scenario with how everything went down. And I'm not sure that... I'm not sure that Flo really loved the situation one way or the other. So let's just, it, it was cool that there was, that you were able to access it and yeah, maybe some extra commentary or whatever would have been great. But at the same time, let's just, let's just give it a pass and see what happens going forward. Yeah. So maybe you should do mine. I should do yours. Maybe we should come up with that for a future entrance music and signature move. Uh, my signature move would be leaving the 210 because that seems like that's the only thing I do right now. <laughs> <That's> not... <laughs> um, Jump in my belly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell you what wouldn't be my entrance music. Umbop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I think everybody misses... Uh... You know the the atmosphere of uh, of what you know Bayside basically created the the excitement around the PBA league and uh, uh, so I think we're all looking forward to to re getting back in that atmosphere again. I, I think they are able to pull it off, and in this most unusual of years, that they, they did an okay job with it uh, and made it. I thought the team things came off the best actually. So, uh, but yeah, I'd like to be back there. Well, speaking of Texas Jesus. There you go. Stu, your halo reaction was so bad, I was curious to know how many times you could leave the two pin. Nice of him to come on. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ball reaction, you man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually at one point did contemplate aiming at the two pin. So I wouldn't <laughs> leave it. Just so you could cover that one for sure. Um, yeah, it was it, it was a fun time. I mean, the thing that was most fun about it was the fact that I got I lost to Chris by almost a hundred in one game, and um, and he didn't have a good reaction either. That makes it tough. He, he he had a pretty good twelve frames, and that's all it took. Really, it's not like I'm criticizing him. I'm just saying that the pair was awful, and I was a lot worse than that. Um, oh God, sorry. <laughs> That's that up for, uh, for um, if you go to Ten in the Pit uh, Pro Shop, Brad's uh, Brad's uh, got a stream up yesterday with AJ. Um, he had AJ on his show, so that could be quite fun. Um, Brad shows on Wednesdays. I think it's at ten a.m. I'm not one hundred percent sure, um, but it's on Wednesdays. Um, it might be noon actually. Thinking about it. 
But uh, if you look up 10 in the pit pro shop um, and check that out, um, like I say, Brad usually does something on the lanes. Um, it's quite informative. Um, Brad's a pretty smart dude. Um, you know, like him or loathe him um, from his actions on the TV. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, no, everybody made a huge deal about that. That is, it's a, it's a classic psychological thing. It's, it was, AJ was mean AJ. He wants to be a high energy. It chases away the nerves for him. Yeah. Brad's going to do what he can to take that away. And by belittling him, he makes him feel like he's not supposed to be able to do that. It didn't yeah. necessarily work, but that's a. But the thing is, is like the narrative was that this really backfired on Brad. It didn't. He had no, his team had the front five, and AJ's team were ninety six in the fifth. Yeah, he had the so only. Actually, it didn't backfire at all. It worked perfectly. It may not have affected AJ, but his team no. didn't back him up. Yeah. True. I mean, it's in Brad Ford, I mean, he's not karma or whatever you call it, but yeah. karma know. doesn't exist. <laughs> so, uh, sweep the racks is a real feud. It, I, it was not scripted. I guarantee it wasn't. I mean, Brad's Brad's reaction was one hundred percent. I've seen it authentic. Yeah, I've seen that one a lot of times in different high roller matches. The ideal open, I mean, it was that kind of stuff happened all the time in the 90s and 2000s when you're bowling amateur tournaments. I mean, that's just, that was all part of the it. deal. And so, I love it. I'm all for it. As much of that as we can get. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm, I'm on team animosity. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that if we had some of those uh, matches at the Masters when we were wearing mics, when we were on the uh, like on uh, Flow or Extra Frame or whatever, I think I think you could have got some quite good content. Um, yeah, it's hard to build the animosity in one game, but AJ and uh, AJ AJ and uh, Brad managed to uh, create that animosity in one frame. <laughs> one frame. Yeah. I mean, the thing that gets overlooked, they, they want all these personalities and all that. Well, now, you know, everybody's worried about how much practice. You don't want to destroy the lanes and defense and offense and all this kind of stuff. So they limit practice on the pair. And then you get started in one game. Nobody's comfortable. Nobody knows exactly what the lanes are doing. Nobody knows, you know, so. And then you get guys that haven't been on a lot of shows. Well, of course, they're going to be tight for at least four or five frames. And then if they're not already blown out of the match, then they can get into it. But until then, so the first half of those matches are always going to be interesting at best and, and probably not particularly emotional unless somebody comes out with the front three or four. And then how excited do you want to get? It's still the first, you know, half the game. Mm -hmm. So if you're not a high energy guy, like AJ can play at that level, loves playing at that level. Yeah. Brad Miller does not. And the thing Double is, he wants to be steady as she goes. Here's, here's a question, and I want to answer it as you. Um, does Brad tend to complain or cause scenes? Not that it's a bad thing, but I've seen a lot from him. Well, what do you expect? He's from New York. <laughs> it's a perfectly acceptable answer. I'll take that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Although he's not from Strong Island. Which is always Chris's favorite place on earth. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I, I love it. I I I love the whole I love the whole East Coast thing. It's quite yeah. simple. Just straighten your face. No in between. No none of this placated nonsense. Just bang, right between the eyes. Yep. Yeah, you bet. New York. Yeah, and that's fair. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, that's fair. Upstate New York is not really New York. Yeah. The only speaking upstate New York guys are actually humans. It's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Brad just escaped the lab. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, somehow. <laughs> uh... All right. Well, I think we can uh I think we can safely wrap this episode up. The uh, star of the show left uh 20 minutes ago. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, once again, this is uh, this is what's coming. PBA playoffs starting this weekend. Uh, is that first show? That first show is live, right? October seventh. Um, I don't know. Uh, October seventh, by the way, because that would have been yesterday, my wife's birthday. Which October tenth. Yeah. I, I I don't know from this. So uh, I believe that that show will be taped just a few hours before that. I believe it's at one o'clock is that, that grouping. So they'll have, <laughs> they're basically going to, going to, it'll be taped as live. I'm sure. So it'll basically run as a live show. Uh, maybe to fit space might be the only thing they do on it because I believe the next round is at five o'clock and we'll be finished just as that's getting ready to go on, on air. So, uh, so, there you go. I believe we are going to bowl in a pair instead of uh, with big with the two separate ball returns is what I hear. That could obviously change. I don't but, really uh, understand what Larry means. They do. I don't, I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at, Larry. They do alternate lanes. So, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you're going to use, uh, I guess it's going to be five and six then. So it'll be, so that the right lane of doom, sorry, the left lane would, will become. Yeah, the, the left lane of the league in playoffs is now going to be the right lane of, of yeah. So now you will definitely see, now now there will be probably no question, most people will want to finish on the left lane and finish first both. That's a win-win for the higher seeds, generally speaking. Yeah. Unless, the, <laughs> I mean, but who knows? We don't know what yeah. that right lane's like either. That the topography in this place is a little bit of a uh, this is called tricky. Uh, and it, as an open play center, <laughs> I I also heard um, just a quick thing. People were saying how they think that when they when they don't use when they use a lane from each pair, that it it's not a true pair and all of this stuff. Depending on how they actually installed the lanes, and I don't know that much about this, but I have listened to people. Mm -hmm. And it makes a lot of sense. The left lane from one pair and the right lane from the other pair are often going to be actually quite similar because they're on the same joist. Right. Exactly. The cribbing there is actually more, in theory, should be more because it stops where the ball tracks go through. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. Not every setup, but the majority of them, like lane six and seven in that case, are on the same foundation and in theory yeah. should also be so if one of the lanes hooks, like, theoretically, if the lane's this way, it's going to be that way on both lanes, theoretically. So that that that, that was just a piece of information that when someone tells you, you go, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've never really thought about that. And then once you think about it, it makes perfect sense because you got a big ball return in the way for the other one. <laughs> no, I like it. Can you know what the stew is cooking? It's what the stew is grilling, more like. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and happy belated born day, Linda. So it was her birthday yesterday. She's 29 again. And uh, so if you had a chance and you missed her yesterday, please reach out. She was a little under the weather. We did not get to celebrate a whole lot. So uh, uh, we're pushing it back. She's going to have a birthday month now. and. Uh, so I'm going to need to win a few matches. So. Um, whatever happened to the trick shot shows? I'll tell you what happened to the trick shot shows. Oscar threw it over a bar stool at the arrows, and it kind of became irrelevant what anybody else could do. <laughs> yeah. she, he, he did uh, set the bar to a place we couldn't really get to anymore. Um, I understand now. Okay. Yes, I like the shot for shot thing. I don't necessarily didn't really know it was an Asian thing, but yes, I like the shot for shot thing too. Um, that's one thing I really, that's one thing I like about the Weber Cup and the one lane thing. Yeah. I like that we both finished the 10 frame on the, the, the same lane. And I like that it's like tennis or match play golf or whatever. So it goes blow for blow. I yeah. kind of like that. I That's the one downfall, I think, of the two, the one, two, 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 two. If the match is close, and one guy opens, he goes open, open. The match, if the other guy gets up and strikes, the match is over. Whereas it's a little, if, if he opens and then the other guy can respond, 
And yeah. then it, it, it's not quite so. It's not so quickly from yeah. from one or the other. Yeah. So, well, you know, whatever. Yeah. We need just uh, we do just cover this uh, for the league thing. Using the in between is actually a necessity because between five strike balls and five spare balls, the ball returns aren't big enough. I'm not sure that's why it originally happened in Bayside. You had to do it because there was no place big enough without poles to have the set. And so that's why it originally happened. And then logistically, it actually works out much better that way uh, when we're playing. So and also you bowl in Baker. So you got to bowl a whole game on the one lane. Yeah. It, it, it makes way more sense. Yeah. You're not going back. And, so not a big deal. I, I um, like it personally. I, 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 I like, I like that there's more space around and everything. And, it's a minor inconvenience picking your ball up to go from one lane to the other lane. And I guess that might make the show a little slower. Um, but, you know, if guys bowled faster, there'd be a lot of things. Changing. Yeah. Well, if every college bowler would just speed up their pre-shot routine by about eight seconds, all the shows would be faster. So, and I say that as someone who is part of the problem at one point. So. <laughs> well, maybe if we stop wiping balls, it'd be okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not it. <laughs> all right uh, well, on that note we're, uh, we're we're gonna have our first show in a while underneath an hour so uh yeah we will um we will try and figure out what we can uh what we can put together a show uh for next week um it's gonna be a little challenging trying to navigate what's been shown what hasn't been shown and everything else but we'll uh yeah we'll go over the first week's shows the first weekend show uh and then uh, uh, the upcoming Weber Cup, uh, we'll do some previews. Thursday will be a travel day for all of us, because there will not be a show that day, I believe. Yeah, well, um, depending on what the rules are and what the internet connection is like when we get to England, then uh, maybe we can put together something um, from the Weber Cup. I'm hoping that um, the internet connection is good enough for us to do that. Yeah. Uh, that would be uh, that would be good fun. Um Live, yeah. from, live from the stage, probably. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. And we can have a, another very inspirational and uh, very motivating person, uh, Emily Fraser. Um, she she can explain to us uh, in no uncertain terms what she wants us to do. Um, she never leaves you wondering. <laughs> well, and just so nobody forgets, Stu did beat Kyle in three games to benefit a charity. So. <laughs> he wants to make sure everybody knows and he will be reminding Kyle I have no doubts <laughs> know what's going to happen so well oh, yeah. once again support small business support bowling and please 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 watch the shows DVR them get the word out it, it will be tricky during the playoffs because the times do jump around so uh, share when you can do what you can but uh, Coley is right about that the bigger our ratings are the better the chances of this whole thing growing um, keep supporting those businesses eat, eat a meal there once in a while get a beverage, help those places get through until we get to the other side of this and as usual support our sponsors uh, Rotogrip, Niner Global that other company, Storm uh, <laughs> Vicegrip, Turbo uh, 3G, Dexter uh, Coolwick Master and the company oh, you name later I'm sure so. and Bowler's Mark and Bowler's Mart. Right there. Okay. All right. All right. Until next Take time, care, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.